In this video, a mad guy, yours truly, is going to solve the problems of Mean Girls. I randomly stumbled upon this video called Math in Mean Girls, and I noticed a ton of math in the backgrounds of these scenes. I thought, why not go ahead and solve these questions? The nerd. So I spent my hard-earned money, rented Mean Girls on Apple TV, and paused the movie every single time a math question appeared. I sat down and I scribed as many questions as I could, and to identify all of the different questions that I might need to solve. All that done, I'm going back to the same video that I stumbled upon at the very beginning. I'm gonna react to the video and solve the questions in that video. Spanish. You're taking 12th grade calculus? Yeah, I like math. Ew, why? Because it's the same in every country. That is true. If you interpret the question properly, you can basically do math everywhere you go. So. You should think about joining. Oh, you'd be perfect for it. So those are uh, differential equations in the background over there. Uh, there are a bunch of several standard techniques to solve these differential equations. It's very hard to solve the particular differential equation if you don't know what's the thing on the right. This is an expression and it equals something, but what does it equal to? And so I'm just going to solve the general solutions to those equations. Now there's a very standard way to solve differential equations of this form. We'll first need to write out the characteristic equation and the equation is a polynomial whose coefficients match those of the original differential equation. Lambda squared plus 2 lambda minus 3 equals to 0. We can factorize the quadratic polynomial to get lambda plus 3 times lambda minus 1 and solve for lambda to obtain lambda being negative 3 or positive of 1. And right away, we can derive that the general solution will be given in this form. It will be y equals to some constant times to the negative 3t plus some other constant times e to the power of t. And there are many variants of solving this kind of equation. This is known as a second order linear homogeneous differential equation. But the strategy is more or less the same. It's a factorial, so you multiply each one by n. Wrong. Yes, that is wrong. Um, the factorial, you multiply but you go down the number. So 5 factorial, it's 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, what he's described there is basically exponentiation, which is 5 to the power of n. That's when you multiply uh, the number 5 n times. Or alternatively, you could have been taking powers. So say n to the 5, they'll be multiplying n 5 times. Or even taking n to the n, which is multiplying n n times. But none of those are factorials. Africa, you sing for the math leads meeting. I'm not sure if you guys caught that, so maybe I'll just backtrack it a little bit. So that over there, actually this is a matter of calculating the derivative using first principles. So without knowing any rules of differentiation, but going headlong into the formal definition of a derivative, how do we calculate that? Now to find a derivative of a function using first principles, we must first know what it means to take a derivative. And that's where we apply the definition of the derivative, which is essentially a limit of rise over run. The rise is going to be f of a plus h minus f of a. And the run is a difference between a plus h and a, which is simply h. So since f of x equals to 3x minus 2, we can plug in f of a plus h and f of a respectively. We can expand the numerator and cancel out some terms. And now we're left with 3h over h. But from here, the h's can cancel as well. And we are left with 3 over 1 which is precisely the derivative. Okay, I lied. But I had to go home and work on my costume. It's finding any excuse I could to talk to Aaron. Meanwhile, here I am finding any excuse to solve a math question. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Okay. Not I, I didn't catch the ones on the board. Let, let me see if I caught those. It really took me a while. My goodness. Um, I have zero clue what's at the background over there, so... This one, this piece of paper, I, I remember that I purposely rented Mean Girls on Apple TV so that I get a clear enough resolution to actually see what questions are on that paper. The lengths I go to make content, I believe is logarithmic differentiation. There are a few questions over there, so might take a look at that as well. So let's use logarithmic differentiation to find this derivative. So the first thing to do is to first well write the expression down and apply the natural logarithm on both sides. On the right side, we can apply our log laws that the logarithm of a 
quotient is a subtraction of the logarithms and a logarithm of the product is the sum of logarithms and for logarithms we can heat the power down in front of the logarithm let's clean up with a little bit of algebra and now take the derivative with respect to x on both sides on the left side we can apply the chain rule to get 1 over y times dy over dx on the right side the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives and the derivative of the logarithm is 1 over. So the screen is writing out all the differentiation and multiplying y on both sides gives us the derivative. Let's plug in the initial expression for y and that is precisely our final answer. Katie, I need your parents to sign this so they know that you're failing. I thought I saw something on the board but I, I forgot. If I know what's on the board, I'm going to solve it. If I don't know what's on the board, I'm not going to solve it. So I found out what the question on the board is. Actually, a limit question on what happens as x goes to positive infinity. If you have the time and you want to watch my whole slew of how to calculate limits using the epsilon delta definition, click on the video to my epsilon delta video somewhere on the link here. It's a grand six hours long. You can enjoy it all you want. Here, we're not going to epsilon delta anything. We're just going to heuristically solve the problem. The first thing that I always would like to do when I encounter infinite limits is to convert it using a substitution and I'll use a substitution p e equals to 1 over x. This allows us to substitute every single x with 1 over t and we can clean this up with a little bit of algebra. Now letting t go to 0, the 3t terms both approach 0 and our final answer is going to be negative 2 over 1 which is simply negative of 2. I need your parents to sign this so they know that you're failing. But this one I remembered really clearly. This, I believe, was actually on convergence of a bunch of different series. So you got to check whether it's converging or diverging. And then if it's converging, you give a number. If it's diverging, explain why it diverges. Standard series convergence tests, all that good stuff. On convergence series, we have convergence series 1 minus 2 third plus 4 over 9 minus 8 over 27, so on and so forth. We need to check whether it converges or diverges. You might be able to quickly observe that this is actually a geometric series. And the common ratio, in other words, what's the term you multiply to get the next term, is negative 2 over 3. And since the magnitude of this ratio is smaller than 1, the series must converge. Furthermore, we know what it converges to. The sum of a convergent infinite geometric series is equal to the first term over 1 minus the common ratio. In this situation, the first term is 1 and the ratio is negative 2 over 3. And doing a bit of mental calculations, this should be 3 over 5. Proof that no good deed goes unpunished. Oh, hi. Did you want to buy some drugs? I'm just done with my quiz. You know, when I first saw this scene, I had no idea what she was talking about. And then I watched the movie and then I was like, ah, right. I have to say that Mean Girls is interesting. It's a very interesting development of the character. I'm not going to spoil it. I mean, I, I assume many of you guys have watched it before. I mean, the fact that you're watching this video right now. Um, but if you haven't watched it, I, I do like the movie quite a bit. Of course, there's a the math, but you know, putting the math aside and just the storyline, not bad. It's a very interesting way of showing how the character gets influenced by their decisions and how they face the consequences of those. I really enjoyed it a lot. Great turnout this year. Ah, uh, I love it. That's basically every math lecture ever. If you've got at least 10 people there, you've made it in life. Let's start the competition. Here is the first question. Currently on the screen, I actually cannot see what's going on, but I did write the question down. I believe it's some high school, junior high slash even elementary primary school kind of question. You have a bunch of numbers that one is bigger than the other, and then you can probably visualize the solution one way or another. The solution is coming up, but I actually have no idea what the question is on the screen right now. So, to figure it out later on. Twice the larger of two numbers is three more than five times the smaller, and the sum of four times the larger and three times the smaller is 71. Oh my gosh, the, that just got really wordy right there. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. That, that's word vomit. That's just word vomit, right? Now, I actually had no idea what the question was. I thought I watched the HD version of the movie. This is the question. Twice the larger of two numbers is three more than five times the smaller number. And the sum of the four times the larger and three times the smaller is 71. We want to find the numbers. And that was a mouthful. And I did not catch that the first time I watched the scene. 
This is a standard algebra problem, although it takes a bit of effort to pass the information. So we have a smaller and a larger number, let's write that as x and y. And we're given the information that 2 times the larger number, y, is 3 more than 5 times the smaller number, x. And the second piece of information tells us that 4 times of y plus 3 times of x is 71. We can take the first equation, multiply it by 2, and obtain 4y equals to 10x plus 6. We can now substitute the entire 4y expression into the second equation. Let the screen do a bit of calculations. The two numbers are x equals to 5 and y equals to 14. North Shore? 14 and 5. That is correct. Question number 2. The doing it in a math contest is beyond me. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've never been a fan of math contests. I've always felt very inferior when I uh, do math with people who are smarter than me and faster than me and they are nerdier than me and quirkier than me even. And I remember I was like 12 and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time here. I I'm not a math contest guy, but man, respect to those who are. So all of that. Contestants? Find the limit of this equation. So I think this one, this problem got really viral and famous a few years. It's a really interesting question to solve. I'm definitely going to solve this. This is like the highlight of the movie, if you would, right? This let them win. The key to this problem is that for small x, ln of y minus x will be approximately minus x using Taylor series. Sine of x is approximately x. And 1 minus cosine squared x is actually sine squared x by the Pythagorean identity. And that approximately equals to x squared. This tells us that the fraction as a whole is approximately equal to negative x minus x over x squared. Let the screen do some algebra, and as x approaches 0, this expression either explodes in the positive or the negative infinity, and therefore the limit does not exist. Calling somebody else fat won't make you any skinnier. Calling someone stupid doesn't make you any smarter. And ruining Regina George's life definitely didn't make me any happier. All you can do in life is try to solve the problem in front of you. You know, I would be really happy if that was like the final conclusion of the entire movie. Talking behind other people's backs, and cutting it, the damage has been done, and then she experiences the full consequences of uh, her mistakes. The limit is negative one. Oh crap, I lost. That answer is incorrect. Now we are in a sudden death. If Miss Heron can answer this problem correctly, we have a winner. If the limit never approaches anything, the limit does not exist. The limit does not exist. Our new state champions, the North Shore Mathletes. Yeah, she got it. She got it. That is a very nerdy way to celebrate the 19th anniversary of Mean Girls. Which is surprising since I've actually never watched the show. And the only reason I'm watching it is in order to solve its math questions. Mockingbird Lane. If instead you want to see two nice girls rather than mean girls prove the Pythagoras theorem in a completely novel way, click on the video on the screen here.